Now, normally, normally, when your NCAA or collegiate swimming career is done, when your eligibility runs out, that means that your time and your ability to break an NCAA, a pool, a team, a, an American record, whatever, in a short courts yards pool, when your eligibility runs out in the NCAA cycle, that means that your time and ability to break those records is done, normally. Kate Douglas, however, is anything but normal. And if last year's 2023 Women's NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships and what Kate Douglas did in that pool at that meet didn't prove that to you, then I think you need to go to a doctor. You need to go to a doctor of some kind, like a swimming fandom doctor that will sit you down and present you with two different situations and ask you which one is more incredible. And they'll kind of help you navigate the process of becoming a better fan. Because if you don't think what Kate Douglas did at the 2023 Swimming and Diving NCAA Championships, I'm saying that all out of order. If you don't think that proved, here we go, big take, hot take coming in, that Kate Douglas is the greatest short course yards female swimmer of all time. Yep, I'm going there. If you don't believe that, I think you need to go to a doctor because if you mix together the versatility, the consistency, and the relay value that I'm reading off the screen right here and trying to divert your attention into this mixing pot because it's the bit that I programmed in here to distract you from the fact that I needed to read off my screen. But if you mix all of those three things together into a pot, what pops out of it is Kate Douglas. Kate Douglas is versatile as hell. I mean, no, there's no contest there. She does the 50 freestyle, the 200 fly, the mile, probably whatever. She's incredibly consistent. And she also adds a ridiculous amount of value to relays. And there you go. Kate Douglas, greatest short course yards swimmer of all time. Female swimmer of all time. If you disagree, go yell at me in the comments section. But Kate wanted to double down. She wanted to double down even though her NCAA career is done and make sure that everybody knew Kate Douglas is the greatest NCAA swimmer of all time, short course yard swimmer of all time. And she broke the NCAA record in the 100 IM and became the first female swimmer to break 52 seconds in the 100 IM and did it with a really long first turn as well. It wasn't a perfect swim. It wasn't a perfect swim when Kate Douglas went 51-9 in the 100 IM short course yards and broke the NCAA US Open American record, whatever. I'm doing the NCAA air quotes here. I'm doing the air quotes because I'm trying to emphasize a point that I want to make in this video. And I'm intentionally sounding stupid by doing the NCAA record air quotes when obviously Kate Douglas can't break the NCAA record in an event in general anymore because she's no longer an NCAA athlete, but also because the 100 IM isn't an NCAA contested event. We'll get to that in a second. Now, NCAA record, right? NCAA record. That, to me, in the short course yards realm, in the short course yards region, distance, is the world record. It, th when you say NCAA record, you think world record. This is the fastest swim that has ever been done in a short course yards pool, for me, at least. When I hear US Open record, it kind of takes my brain a second to compare and contrast what took, I mean, obviously any swim short course yards is going to have happened in the US. So the US Open record is the world record, essentially, until we have a meet in France or a meet in, I don't know, Italy or Australia that is in a short course yards pool. The US Open record is the world record. But the NCAA record just kind of feels like it is the world record because, like I said at the beginning of the video, when you graduate from the NCAA, I'm hammering the air quotes right now, hammering them. I'm going to stop. When you graduate from the NCAA cycle, from the NCAA part of your career, your time swimming short course yards is done. And I think we really need to figure out how to incentivize a short course yards meet, like maybe the US Open in 2024 to get some pros to taper, suit up and chase some of these NCAA world record, US Open records, whatever, and start to make a battle between professional swimmers that are done, like Katie Ledecky did in the mile. She went off and broke the NCAA record, US Open record, whatever, I apologize in the 1650 and just push that a little bit further out of reach for any any swimmer any female swimmer that wants to try to break it eventually but the last point that i want to make is and this is the one that i want you to comment on this is the one that i want to argue or not argue debate in the comment section with y'all is i think the 100 im and I, th I think we're missing something here in ncaa swimming we're missing plenty of things to make this sport a revenue model driven sport whatever that means a revenue generating sport i guess one that people stay engaged with i think there's a lot of things that we can start to piece together to make this a much more sustainable self-sustaining sport in the ncaa market but i think one of the things that we could plug in and one of our missed opportunities is this and you just go down in the comment section and comment yes or comment no on whether you agree or whether you do not. I think we need to add the 100 IM and turn it into a staple in the NCAA swimming, especially the NCAA championship event lineup, right? I think we're, I think we're missing out. It is 
such a fun event to watch. It is such a fun event to watch because you're going to have big dogs like a Jordan Crooks or a Josh Liendo get in there and try to tear it up. And then you're going to have, I mean, you have like a Kate Douglas, which if you watch the 100 IM, which I'll link in the description where she went 51-9 at the UVA inner squad meet. If you watch the way she swam that, she doesn't make it look like she's really sprinting. It wasn't a perfect swim by any means. Long first turn and her stroke count and her aggression that she swims with, she just cuts through the water like butter. And that's what makes her a great long course swimmer as well. Believe it or not, Kate Douglas, incredible short course yard swimmer, translates to long course. She just glides right off the water like a little like a little boat. But I really do think we need to add the 100 IM to the NCAA event lineup. I think it would be incredibly exciting to watch like a Leon Marchand, who's kind of a, a butter cutter, if you will. <laughs> that is just a weird phrase. But we're going to wrap this one up. Don't forget to go down in the comment section and comment whether or not you think the 100 IM should be added to the NCAA event cycle, the NCAA event lineup. I am a proponent of keeping the event lineup I don't want to say as clean as possible, especially in the international scene, because you can swim as many events as you want. And I think if we add too many events, like the 50s and then, you know, other little distances in between, like a, like a 300 backstroke or something like that, I think it starts to dilute the impact that a medal count will have as a, on a fan, right? If you have 57 events that you can swim and like 97 relays, that's, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> You can kind of sneak in and run up your gold medal and just total medal count and then just kind of dilute the whole thing. And then it kind of like, oh, uh, well, is, you know, winning nine gold medals in 2060 as cool as winning eight gold medals in 2008. It's it's a long story. And, you know, we'll talk about it in another video. Drop your comment. Hit that like button if you like the video and also hit that like button. If you think that Kate Douglas would beat you in a 100 I am, I will be liking the own, my own video on this one because Kate Douglas would smoke me in 100 I am right now and she would make it look easy. Subscribe if you want more videos like this to pop up on your homepage and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.